Hey everybody, welcome back to another Reasonable Price Prediction, the series where we try to figure out where your favorite altcoins could be headed. Now today, it's not gonna be an altcoin. It's gonna be the big dog. It's gonna be the one and only Bitcoin that we're looking at. And already, if you've taken a look at this chart and paused the video, or even just seen it as I was talking about this intro, we have a lot of stuff going on. But all of this stuff, in my opinion, is very interested. And before you click off, because Bitcoin's boring and there's no gains in Bitcoin, we're also going to be looking at Ethereum. But, but, we're mainly focusing on Bitcoin. I'm not going to lie to you. But the reason why we're focusing on Bitcoin is because I think it is so important to know where Bitcoin is headed. Because not only does it show where the crypto market is headed, the crypto market follows Bitcoin, but to a more extreme degree as you go down the risk curve and the risk curve in crypto is altcoins. So depending on what altcoin you're holding, what sort of market cap range it is, what you see happen with Bitcoin, you will most likely see the same thing happen to your altcoin. There's also other important time factor things that occur with Bitcoin relating to altcoins. For example, which one tops out first? Which one sees the first pullback? How long does Bitcoin rally compared to altcoins? These are all things we're going to talk about in the video and are very good things to know. And especially with the halving coming up, it's always useful to know what Bitcoin does because the Bitcoin halving is what basically dictates the whole crypto space to a sense. So jumping straight into it, we can see that I've organized my data in terms of halvings. So halving to halving is a cycle and that's what we're going to be looking at. What happens each cycle? And first thing to prefix is this is the length of the cycle, this blue arrow here. And straight away, we can see that they are extremely similar dates within a few weeks of each other, averaging out around 1400 days, roughly. If we then zoom in to the current cycle, which we will take as an example, we can see I have this green arrow. This shows where from the halving, this shows how long it took Bitcoin to reach its cycle high. And coincidentally, usually it's all time high from the halving date. And if we zoom out, we can see they are all both very similar times, all three of them. We have a bit of an outlier, our first cycle, but I will talk about that. Following that up with our red arrow up here, it's a similar story. How long it took Bitcoin from its all-time high to drop down to its all-time low. And these circles, of course, mark the high, the green for high, and the red for low. And again, just zooming out, we can see that these red arrows are more or less spot on with each other with no real exception. They range from 53 weeks to 59 weeks with the last two being one week within each other, one week of a difference between each other, which is quite astounding in terms of time frame. There's also another very interesting time frame that I'll go into later that this purple line represents, and that is also within two weeks over basically double the time span. So it's more or less the same cycle, but plus one here, plus one week here, and then double this time frame plus two that's represented here and here. It's really interesting in my opinion. And perhaps the most important piece of data that I will mention is these white arrows that move up. And these basically represent, they're a vertical representation of these arrows that basically take us from halving price to halving price. So cycle open to cycle close. And we can see as the cycles go on, very clearly, these slopes become much more horizontal. As time goes on, these slopes tend towards horizontal with our first cycle that we had being a 50x, you know, a 5,000% move. Then from our next cycle, we moved from a $650 Bitcoin to a $10,000 Bitcoin, which basically came up to a 1,200% move, a 12x. And then this current cycle that I'm assuming, based on data that I'll go into later, we could be looking at a 400 and 60% move to the upside to see the close of this cycle. And if we zoom out again, one can, one thing that kind of does seem to make itself apparent is here we are dropping by 75%. So we move from 5,000 to 1,200, and 1,200 is basically a quarter of 5,000. Here we drop from 12,000 to 4,000, and that is a third of 12,000. So we're dropping 66% of a move of, of, of how far we're moving during this range in the next cycle. So my first point that I want to make out is for the coming cycle, it is not unreasonable to assume that we follow a diminishing return in terms of how much Bitcoin moves to the upside during these timeframes. And we could see 
a potential close of this cycle, sorry, not of this cycle, of next cycle at a price of around 120,000 US dollars. And now, that does not technically indicate the all-time high of where Bitcoin will go. It represents the move that Bitcoin will make from halving to halving, cycle open to cycle close. So naturally, or what we've seen so far, we can presume that the all-time high will be an even higher price than this of 120,000 US dollars. So you could be looking at potentially a 150,000 market cap for Bitcoin, because if we also take a look at how far Bitcoin moves from this purple line, which I will explain in a minute as well, it's about 80% during this first cycle, 80% during the second cycle, and what would you believe? 40% in this current cycle. So again, still a bit of a diminishing returns, but if we take an average roughly of 60, 65% and move that up from where this purple line will be in four years, which is the price of the halving. So assuming that we get our next cycle close price here from this move, which puts it at 120,000 US dollars, and we make a move of 65% above that, we could potentially see an all-time high for Bitcoin at 2100,000 US dollars, which from current price is a 4X. Now, what did we see last time from where we went from in terms of halving price to all-time high? We did an 8X, or excuse me, a 7X. So approximately, we're getting just over a half, but maybe we should be a, more, a bit more rational. Say we should assume that we know that we'll cross the halving at about this $48,000 level, which again, sorry, I'll explain uh, in a second, this purple line. But say we know that it's going to be $50,000 and we're going to take half of what we got last time, which was a 7X, which isn't unreasonable. That puts you at, bang on, a 220000 US dollar, basically the same level, the same range that we were looking at before. And now, I know that all sounds very well and good when I propose this, but mark it off a random number that doesn't make any sense to you. And that of course is this purple line that we've spoken about. Sorry, let me realign. This purple line that we've spoken about or I've spoken about and put a lot of weight behind. And it's true, I have put a lot of weight behind this purple line, but it's something that has played out with Bitcoin every cycle pretty similarly. And when I say pretty similarly, I mean almost exactly. And what it basically represents is the price of Bitcoin when it crosses the halving, but it also shows when it first put in that price as a local high. And this is important because it's usually during the bull run or the start of the bear run when it puts in this price. And we can see that all three of these data points that we have so far are the exact same time frames, which point to the exact same local tops during the bear run, which line up identically with the price that they were at during the halving week. We can see that's basically spot on. I did move them ever so slightly up so that they could be read more, but I mean, they're basically spot on, basically spot on. This one also measuring from our local top here to a similar price of where we were at, like during the halving, basically spot on. And again, I was making sure to measure from exactly where this local top was, the week of the highest point that we got. And I did that on the previous one. And if we zoom in on where we were 108 weeks ago from the upcoming halving, we were at this local top here, which had a price of 48,000 US dollars. Now, Bitcoin has rallied up since 2023 to get to this level. And we've done like a U here. And we don't often do, well, we sort of do see a U technically at some point. And we, we had more of a bowl U that we are getting this cycle. If we zoom out, we can see the similarities here to this cycle, to this cycle are a lot more compared to this one. But we can see that last cycle, or sorry, last cycle, the first cycle, Bitcoin, because we'll, we'll compare it to this one because it's played out a lot more similarly. Bitcoin moved up, but a couple of weeks before the halving had a very strong pull down of 20-15%, and I mean it even wicked, excuse me, it wicked as low as 30%. And now, I'm not saying we have to have a 30% drop, 
if we get a third of that, if we take a 10% drop from where we currently are, that puts us at 45,000 US dollars. So even a third of what we had two cycles ago would put us well below what we need to be at or what we could be at. Um, you may ask what type of a move do we need from this price to get to this magical 48,000, 47,000 price. Again, it is about an 8% move. And have we seen an 8% move from Bitcoin recently? Yes, a few weeks ago we saw a 15% move to the downside. And even a few weeks before that we had a move of 9%, basically what we need. Now, is it likely that we have some sort of a pullback after four weeks of amazing price? I think it's very possible. I, I don't think that's irrational to think. You know, what goes up must come down. And now the, the famous saying of the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent is a very true phase. So maybe Bitcoin will keep rallying up and uh, you never know, we could be retesting our all-time highs any day now. But to me, I think we will close out this cycle, will pass this halving at somewhere near this 48,000 level. And if we do, I would be, I would be putting a lot of weight myself, I'm not telling you to, but I personally would put a lot of weight into this sort of diminishing returns, but seeing where we're most likely going to close out our next cycle, which could be at, like we spoke about, at $130,000, and with a high of about 60% on top of that, give or take, it puts us at around $200,000. So having put you through that, I'll give you what you want. What does this mean for your altcoin? If we swap to Ethereum, we can see that we don't see things play out exactly the same. First of all, well, we do get these cycle lengths. Obviously, they're the same. They measure the same thing, the Bitcoin halving. That's a constant. That date doesn't change as we switch from chart to chart. These lengths that it takes for Ethereum to get to its all-time high, we see 79 weeks and 78 weeks, so a very nice, close together sample size that we can work with. What did Bitcoin have for the last two? 75 and 78, and the first 52, again an outlier. But we have our, our two cycles that Ethereum was around for, and both similar time frames that they moved. Now, from the high to the low, this is where we start to get a small bit of a discrepancy. Ethereum took 48 weeks to bottom out, and I know technically, here we bottomed out and we even put in a lower low here and I want to argue that and basically say I'm looking at a local low or a major low. It doesn't technically have to be the, the all-time low or the cycle low, it's just a major low and you can argue that I'm trying to fit data into a narrative. I am because I'm trying to compare similar time frames against different cryptocurrencies that are inherently different. And we'll see that I'm basically pulling a lot of data points like this purple line that just doesn't really work. And we can see like next cycle, there's no similarities between the two here. So again, we come back to our 48 weeks and our 52, a concise sample size, but a little bit shorter than our Bitcoin uh, bottoming time frame. And again, this is when Bitcoin actually bottomed. Ethereum doesn't actually bottom. And if you wanna take those numbers, and put them to here, you can run them yourself, but it's definitely gonna give you a lot of outliers, and it's gonna make this data even harder to work with and find similarities. Next up, our percentage moves to the upside. Again, Ethereum first moved its first cycle from $10 to about $200. So a 15X move, and that was from its halving to its halving, cycle open to cycle close, with a high, that cycle of about $1,100. So again, Ethereum saw great moves, but from cycle open to cycle close, it was quite respectable. And again, next cycle, we saw a very similar thing. We saw a similar percentage move where Ethereum moved 1300% up a 13X from cycle open to cycle close. But if we take a look at where Ethereum went from, you know, cycle open to all time high, it did a 93X, its first cycle. If we take a look again here from halving to all time high, we see Ethereum did a 22x. So now we're getting a fifth of what we had originally, or you could argue like 4.5, but just to keep the numbers 
easy and it's always better to aim lower anyway I'm gonna say it's a fifth so if we get a fifth of a 22x move that's basically going to give us a 4x this cycle and that is quite similar to what we're expecting with Bitcoin we're expecting a 4x from halving price to all-time high so does that mean this so does that mean this rule of 1500% and 1300% moves can continue to play out this cycle if we're expecting a 4x? Well, if we take our price range and we zoom out and we measure, assuming we come in at the halving date just below 3000 US dollars, if we take our uh, arrow and we find our price range and we go from the halving date, which is a price we're expecting Ethereum to close this cycle at, you know, somewhere just below the $3,000, $2,800. And we take a 13 or we'll take a 1400% move and average between the two that puts Ethereum at $42,000. Now, some of you might have noticed similarities in the price move. And this is where a lot of people say that Ethereum is one cycle behind Bitcoin. So they go, if you want to look at what Ethereum's doing, going to do, look at Bitcoin. What did Bitcoin do last cycle? If we take a look at Bitcoin last cycle and assume that we're going from this guy, Bitcoin made very different moves during this current cycle. And this is what is to be expected of Ethereum next cycle. A more similar move of what we've seen is this 1200% move, which again lines up very nicely with our last move potentially. So if Bitcoin's going to follow Ethereum, this next cycle, we should see a 4.5x from cycle open to cycle close if it's going to follow Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin here moved from 10,000 to 69,000, basically, more or less resulting in a 6x, give or take. If you want to take a 6x from the halving to the high, which could be more reasonable, you're again looking at a price of 21,000 ETH. So if you want to say ETH is going to play out like Bitcoin price wise, there's many different price ranges that you can take it from because there's a lot of different metrics for you to measure. If you want to take it out as in, no, it's going to hit 69K this cycle, it's going to follow Bitcoin exactly. You're kind of already flawed there because it hasn't followed Bitcoin in terms of where it's ended cycles and where it's open cycles. So people who say Ethereum's just following Bitcoin one cycle behind, they can say that without elaboration and be correct because that basically puts Ethereum anywhere from $10,000 to $42,000, $45,000. And most likely Ethereum will probably hit one of those ranges. So for me, that's why I don't like to put a lot of weight in that theory. And I know I've spoken about it before and very, very, very basically, really. I've never gone into it, and that's kind of the reason why it's way too vague. But if you do really break it down and have a look, there aren't actually too many similarities between Bitcoin and Ethereum in how they've moved. Now, there have been similarities, but there hasn't been a lot of similarities in a wide variety of price movements or percentage checks that you can check. It's either done one of these moves or it's done a different one of these moves compared to Bitcoin. But still, again, this is where your altcoin ties into it. It still had a lot of these timeframes play out very similarly. And again, that's something you can expect your altcoin to perform similarly as well. You can expect, okay, Ethereum and Bitcoin have both moved from the halving to their all time high, and it's taken them approximately 79, 78 weeks in Bitcoin, 75, 78 weeks so you can take a median average of 78 weeks and ballpark your all-time high then now that is in no way a foolproof strategy but it's something to keep in mind because over two cycles now that's happened and for bitcoin like it's 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 the crypto that leads everything in the crypto space everything follows bitcoin's movements they usually just follow them to different degrees. So altcoins, again, move up much higher and they drop much lower. So maybe you might want to go, okay, well, if I haven't sold my altcoins by 80 weeks into the new cycle after this, the halving that's just been, which will be this halving, if I haven't sold my altcoin by 80 weeks, maybe I want to sell them on that 80th week because for Bitcoin after that, it drops 
basically 50% over the next 15 weeks, 100 days. And I can tell you one thing for sure, altcoins dropped a lot faster than that. And if we even take Ethereum, what did Ethereum do? Over those 15 weeks, again, it was basically a 53% drop. So a little bit more, but you can be sure that as you go down that risk curve, that drop increases and increases with of course a few exceptions, but you're very unlikely to be holding the exception. And even if you are holding the exception, why do you want to hold it through this bad time? You're much better off selling it now and buying it back 52 weeks later at a low. So now that can also go back into your buying strategy because at this point you'll have your data on when the all time high was. So you can go, okay, historically, Ethereum and Bitcoin, they've taken about 52 weeks, give or take 53, 54 weeks to go from their all time high to their low. Ethereum, which is an altcoin, reaches its low much earlier than Bitcoin. So maybe I can infer that because my altcoin is much further down the risk curve, it's going to bottom out a similar time to Ethereum because Ethereum is an altcoin. So maybe I want to sell after 80 weeks and buy back after 50 weeks. And how bad of a strategy can that be? And historically, it's been a very good strategy. If you've managed to do this for two cycles, you've been sitting on a lot of money. You've made a lot of money. And even if you just did it with Ethereum or Bitcoin, you've made a lot of money. So again, deferring that from Bitcoin and Ethereum is very useful because a lot of these altcoins, they would give you that info, but a lot of them have only been around for one cycle. Now, of course, there is definitely exceptions. I know, for example, altcoins like Cardano bottomed out a lot later on. They were like 60 weeks plus when they bottomed out. But all I'm saying is Bitcoin usually leads the way. So if Bitcoin is bottoming out, you can be sure that your altcoin isn't too far behind. Now, maybe ahead, it might have bottomed out a week before, a month before. It doesn't really change anything. It gives you a good indication of where your cryptocurrency should be price wise. And the good thing about altcoins in a way, depends how you look at it, is that they often return to those lows that they visit. So you see for Ethereum that this cycle we put in a low and we return to it once and then we shot off. And if you look at Cardano, we put in a low and then we revisited that low and we revisited that low for a third time. But if you look at Bitcoin, we can see we just put in that low and then we were done. Now you could argue that we visited it here, like when we just broke below 18,000. I would disagree because our low was 14, 15,000. And if we really zoom in, you can see that there is quite a big price difference on the chart. So I would argue that we only visited our low once. Bitcoin put in a low once at 74 weeks in after the all time high and didn't revisit that low. Ethereum revisited that low once. Cardano revisited that low twice. So you can see again how as you go down the risk curve in bear or at least non bullish times and especially bearish times, Bitcoin holds up better. So you could have a strategy of hold your altcoin bags from the halving to the peak or 80 weeks, whatever you want to call it. You might want to move into Bitcoin or you might want to move into US dollar or you might want to take your funds completely out of crypto, both totally fine. And then maybe after 54 weeks, you might want to buy in back at Bitcoin because Bitcoin usually performs better over the pre-halving year than altcoins. So again, in my opinion, a very interesting video, but I know a lot of people won't click on this video. Uh, but for those of you that do, and for the few of you that watch this video until the end, I hope you feel like you've learned something important because I feel the more you understand Bitcoin in this crypto space, the better equipped you are to trade and hold altcoins. And remember, everything follows Bitcoin. Altcoins come and go. Bitcoin doesn't. Bitcoin always stays. And all the altcoins that come, they all follow the similar move that Bitcoin does. They all go up during the same time that Bitcoin does. And they all go down at the same time Bitcoin does. Bitcoin's going up, leading up to these timeframes. Bitcoin has historically just gone up. We're now at these timeframes. You can expect good prices in the medium and long term. So it's not unreasonable to also expect that from your altcoins. But anyway, I feel like I've said more than enough. So I'm going to wrap the video up here. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't leave a dislike, totally fine. Tell me why I'm wrong down in the comments. 
I always love to have these discussions with you guys because I love to be challenged and I love to have to explain why I think I'm right. So please test me down in the comments, test me. And there's a good chance that you teach me something. And for that, I'm extremely grateful. So please comment down below what you agree and disagree with. Consider signing up to Fairdesk, the exchange. The link is in the description. Not only do you get a deposit bonus, but you also get reduced fees. It helps out the channel a huge amount. And also you're helping yourself because to have multiple exchanges during a, bear, a bull run is a very good idea because if one exchange goes down, you can just move to the other exchange and take your profits and it stops you from losing out on all time highs potentially. Anyway, thanks very much guys for watching, especially to the end. I know it's a very boring one, but really grateful for all of you that stuck around. Take care and peace.